Now, if your husband or your wife couldn't live in the same country as you, what would you do about it? And if you are convinced they're in danger and your own health is precarious, it makes the situation even more difficult. Well, let's meet Joseph Gorry from Mount Rath, whose wife, Ify, has been refused a visa to join him here in Ireland. Joseph, you're very welcome to the programme. Uh, thank you very much, Will. Now, this is a very long story. It's complicated. So let's go back to the very beginning. How did you meet Ify? Okay. Uh, I sometimes do work as a mechanic for uh, a lot of black folks. Um, there was one particularly one of my friends who was uh, uh, continuously telling me that he would introduce me to a nice woman. And as I uh, was separated at this time, the last thing I wanted was another woman in my life. So mm. I told him, ah, forget it. So the guy persisted anyway, and he kept on saying, I, I will find you a woman, I'll find you a woman. So eventually he um, in one of his parties, and um, this beautiful lady was at it, and we were introduced. We just hit it off from that day on. Okay, so love at first sight almost. Oh, definitely, yeah. And how quickly did you move from there? Okay, um, as I said, I was going through a separation at the time, and I hadn't been divorced. Um, so obviously... Uh, we we then realised like you know we were meant to be and we discussed marriage, okay. Um, so uh, I told her that obviously I couldn't go ahead with the marriage until my divorce had come through. In the meantime, she told me you never inquired as to what my status was in this country. So I said okay, but you have been here for the last three years plus. So I took it for granted that everything was okay. Hmm. What had she been doing? Uh, she was working with one of her African uh, uh, sisters, as she calls them, one of her African friends in Dublin, um, in a hair studio. Right, so she was a hairdresser and she was employed and... Well, you, you, basically, you, like, uh, she started off where she was helping her friend to bring in customers into her shop. All right, so she was like a PR out the front. Exactly, to you know, encourage people my to come friend in. does uh, beautiful extensions, uh, you should come into this shop and we'll do a great deal, that kind of thing. Right. So you had assumed, had you, that she was uh, kosher, that um, all the paperwork was in order and that she could remain here, did you? Yes, I couldn't believe that somebody could be in the country for uh, a number of years and not be legit. So uh, you can imagine it was a bit of a bombshell when I discovered uh, that uh, she had been given a deportation order. So I said, well, why didn't you go back then? Or how have you been able to evade for this long? So she said, uh, she then told me the story of uh, why she had left in the first place. That she had been married before and uh, her father-in-law was a member of a tribe called Ogbani tribe, which were, in her belief, uh, uh, part of a cult and her being a d devout Christian um, she objected to her husband joining this cult you know and uh, how did her so, husband feel about it uh, with pressure from them, uh, her father-in-law uh, I don't know what happened but uh, it turned out her husband eventually he died of a heart attack at age 50 um, and how did the family react to that accused her of his murder and uh, they threatened her they they uh, they came to her house one night while she was uh, at one of her prayer meetings. She had gone to church. And when she came back home, there was a, a message waiting for her. They had raped her cousin, who was actually mining the, cousin, uh, mining the house. And they left a message to tell my wife uh, that even if she crawled back into her mother's womb, she wouldn't be able to escape them. So obviously she was terrified. and um, She would advise to get the hell out of Dodge, which you would do. Um, understandably so. So um, the reason she came to Ireland was um, she had heard that uh, there was a lot of Christian churches uh, in Ireland and that there were people who were very welcoming and very very warm. So she she came in uh, with the help of an agent. And why was the deportation order issued then? Uh, they, obviously, they didn't. Uh, they didn't believe her story that uh, things could be so bad back in Nigeria. And they said, because Nigeria was such a vast country, surely she should have been able to relocate to a more safer place. And could she? Well, uh, Nigeria or how is widespread a very, very is big this, country. This, this, this tribe plan. seemently has uh, far-reaching um, um, capabilities. Um, I don't know if you understand Nigeria or not, but they seem to be very spiritual, and there's a lot of uh, kind of 
Oh, uh, what would you call it? Um, uh, I don't know what's the name I'm looking for. Did it, uh, where they can do things through magic or through black magic or whatever. And she was very scared. So much so that she she got the hell out of there as quickly as she could. Okay, and when she told you this, I imagine it was a bombshell landing on you. How did you react? I couldn't believe that such a thing could uh, could happen in the normal, uh, everyday world like that we live in, you know. Mm. Did you ever doubt her? Uh, I, I, it seemed so genuine. She had never lied to me uh, at all, and she still hasn't. So, uh, at the back of my mind, could this so, uh, such a thing be happening? So, um, uh... I said to her, look, would this deportation order, if we ever were travelling together and we happened to run into a guard at checkpoint and they ask you for identification, you don't have it. You're in trouble. You're going to get arrested. The best thing we can do is um, get, get married and uh, apply for a visa then. Continuously harping on about how much she misses her family back home. I said, Jesus, it's very dangerous to go back there. So, uh, um, so did you you did get married, but you decided not to get married in Ireland? Right. The reason that uh, we didn't get married in Ireland was um, number one, I would have uh, I wanted to meet her family and let them meet me, and you know, I was also in the back of my mind was this little niggling doubt. Uh, I wanted to check out yeah exactly what was being said to me before I actually committed myself. You know, um, so um, I checked to see what was the best way of approaching this. So I went to the immigration people up in Borghi, uh, Innes, they're called, and I said, what is the correct procedure to follow if I want to marry an African woman? They advised that I should travel to Nigeria, marry her over there, and submit an application for a visa in their Abuja office, which we did. We married in... Uh, we went to Nigeria, first of all, on the 15th of September, all nine. And we were married on the 19th, on the following Saturday. Mm. By the way, why did they encourage you to get married in Nigeria? Did they feel that it would appear more genuine than perhaps some of these cases of wedding tourism, as it's now called, that, that goes on where people have a marriage of convenience, which is really for visas? Well, obviously, for obvious reasons, I didn't disclose to them the fact that uh, she uh, was here and had a deportation order against her because they were scared that they were going to take her from me. So I, I left that out, okay? I think understandably so. Um, because uh, if I had said to them, I am with a woman now who is under deportation order and we live at so-and-so address... Yeah, well, they would come and... They, they would come and take her from me and uh, goodness knows when I would ever see her again, you know? So I was scared for that thing. Um, it was my belief that if we could show uh, the Irish government that we were a genuine couple, that uh, they would have allowed her to travel back with me, how wrong we were. Biggest mistake of my life. So, Just tell uh, me about Nigeria uh, I, uh, first, well, though. I went over and... Jo Joseph, that, uh, when you were in Nigeria, did you get the sense of danger that she had told you about? Are you now convinced that she, being over there alone, is at risk? Definitely. Uh, like, even for myself, because of the colour of my skin, they seem to be... Uh, you know, if they see a white person, they immediately think, oh, this guy has money. So you're likely to be kidnapped and maybe held for ransom. This was a scare for me, you know. Um, so basically, I spent my time over there in indoors, and she was very scared. Even to allow, uh, any time we would go out, we would book a taxi, and you know the taxi would arrive, and I would rush out through the door. If we were going anywhere, even to the airport, for to go to uh, Abuja, as we did, um, we stayed in the hotel in uh, Abuja while awaiting. Um, the application uh, in the Abuja embassy. This is the marriage application? No, this was the... The, the, the visa application. visa application. Right. Abuja is a plane ride of about an hour from Lagos. So after we had done our... Um, we, do, we got married in the registry office in Akeja, which is not far out of Lagos. It's and, and um, did you have witnesses? Or, is she with her family now, or who is she staying she's with? She's moving around between sisters at the moment. Uh, for the obvious reasons, she doesn't want to stay too, uh, too long in the one place in case her uh, previous in-laws uh, get wind of the fact that she is in Nigeria. Right. So did you have anybody present for the wedding ceremony? Um, most of her family. All except her mother. 
and there were some close friends of hers also. There was about 18, 20 guests in total. Right. When did it become apparent that her application was refused or wouldn't get any traction? Right. I, I, as I said, I went on uh, September 15th and was due to, I came back on a month later. Um, I was shocked that we had not gotten any reply in that period of time, but I had no other option because my plane ticket was until that date. Came back in that uh, the application had failed for three reasons. Number one, they wanted uh, copies of bank statements. Secondly, they wanted uh, proof of relationship history. And thirdly, um, the immigration history of applicant. So we submitted bank statements from joint bank statements and personal bank statements. Um, oh, I that's the easy part. How, how do you prove a relationship history, Joseph? Yes, how we, how we verified that was people that had known us, uh, including pastors and whatever, wrote letters on our behalf saying they'd know, uh, known us as a couple for many years. Okay, you were able to establish that. And they then... have accepted both the, the statements and uh, the relationship history part of it, okay. But the, Im the immigration history? Y yes. The immigration history was the underlying uh, problem. Because of the immigration history that she was at a deportation order, that's why the appeal failed. We were devastated at this news. Um, I returned to Nigeria then on, I think it was, um, yeah, March 5th. And I stayed for a further two weeks, trying to pacify my wife. And uh, I, in the meantime, I would gotten a local TD involved, uh, hoping that with his intercession, that it would help to resolve the situation. That maybe he would have the ear of the justice minister and could speak to him from a humanitarian pr mm. uh, approach. And the justice minister is empowered to make an exception or to uh, give an order affecting her immigration into the in, into the country? Yes. But so far you haven't had any success on the political front? No. Uh, Damrod Hearn was the first uh, Justice Minister to be approved uh, and I had three different TDs kind of bombarding uh, the Justice Minister uh, with appeals on, uh, on our behalf and it all came to naught. So with the change of government I now apply to the current Justice Minister and I got back a reply in May saying nothing had changed. But what, uh, what, had, what had happened, or uh, what has happened uh, in, you know, I was telling you that I went, um, went back to Nigeria on March 5th and stayed for two weeks. Mm. We were under the belief that this TD who had uh, told us he was, going to, he was going to help us and would email me during the length of stay that I was uh, in Nigeria. He failed to do so, and I approached him when I came back home two weeks later. I, I came back on March 19th, and uh, it was a Saturday. Uh, the following Monday, I went to see this man, and he now told me, I believe we should go legal on this. This was after I exhausted all the legal avenues that I believe were open to me. It was almost like I hit a brick wall. The following day, I had a heart attack. So um, I had an immigration uh, solicitor working for us uh, on our appeal. I now... Uh, told him, told them what had happened, and could they appeal the deportation order based on our change of circumstances? Mm. Do you believe, by the way, the heart attack was brought on by the stress of all this? Certainly. Uh, like it was, if you could imagine the stinking feeling that I got when I was so uh, convinced that this particular TD was going to be instrumental in helping us, to now find. <laughs> Another brick wall yeah. I've come When up. the help didn't materialise, it was obviously a disappointment to you. It, it was just so much of a sinking feeling, so much of a disbelief that I, I just couldn't... Uh, I said, what am I going to do next? I couldn't... Uh, I couldn't believe, first of all, that when we had gone and proven uh, by our marriage and uh, I had uh, done the, the divorce, I had done everything as I believe for all the right reasons and done everything totally above board, you know, um, why, when this woman had never been in trouble, she'd never cost the state a penny in either uh, housing or benefits or anything like that. She was able to take care of herself during all the time. Okay, so let, let, let's come to the present then and, and your current situation. Uh, at the moment you have, is it a 80% blocked artery? That's right. During the, the operation uh, for my heart attack, they told me that I had an 80% blockage in, a, in another of my arteries. And that, this, uh, obviously, uh, 
I said, if I have an 80% blockage in an artery, do, does that mean I have an 80% chance of having another heart attack? Well, they told me with medication uh, that I'm uh, quite a lot, um, that there was a good chance that I would have a normal life. But at this moment in time, I, don't, I haven't got a normal life. Right, they haven't suggested any type of surgery to clear the blockage so far. Well, what they do... When I had my heart attack, they, what they did was they put a stent into whatever artery they found was the most blocked at the time. Uh, and obviously I survived that, you know. Um, but it's this worry that if um, the blockage that I now have could lead to another uh, heart attack or stroke that would leave me powerless, I'm finished because I live on my own. Uh, whereas if I had my wife here, she could phone for assistance or maybe drive me to the hospital, which I was able to do the last time, you know. So that's your health. And what about her state at the moment? What, what, what sort of uh, worry, anxiety does she have and what risk is, is there to her? OK, well, first of all, um, her first husband died uh, at age 50 and I'm five years his senior. Uh, so... Um, and he died of a heart attack as well, you said? Yes, he died of a heart attack. So you, you can imagine, now she has a, a new husband who is five years more to, uh, more senior to him, and there's this separation between us. It's it's had an unjust, uh, untold stress mm. on top of both of us. And what is she doing day to day if she believes that there's this risk of bumping into her in-laws and horrible things happening? Basically hiding. At and and that's what she's going to do indefinitely. Is, and I have been in the house that she stays in, and a dungeon, as I would call it, is a very rough part, uh, neighborhood. With light maybe for one hour uh, in in two or three days. Okay, Joseph. A lot of people who have contacted us want to know why you can't go to Nigeria to live with her and to protect her. It has been told to me by my doctors uh, been, that it has been ill-advised due to uh, the... Um, in Nigeria, they, they wouldn't have the same facilities as they do here in order to look after somebody with a heart attack. Right. If you have a heart attack in Nigeria, the chances of you dying are much greater. Uh-huh. Uh, plus the weather conditions and everything. I, I get it very hard to survive there even for a couple of weeks at a time, you know. How warm would it be today, say? Would it be in the 40s, 50s? It would be maybe? averaging around 30 degrees, 30... Anything from about uh, 28 to 32. When you go over there, it is weltering heat. Right. So, you in, know, in other words, if you, if you have a, a bad heart, it's not the type of conditions that really ease your situation. It, in fact, is quite the opposite. So what is your next move, then? Because you seem stuck between a rock and a hard place if the authorities won't give her a visa if your medical situation won't allow you to travel over to her and live with her what happens next i have no idea i have uh, appealed to everybody that i could um, that i could think of um, i i honestly just do not know at this stage all i do know is that um, it's killing both of us uh, like it, it, if if you can imagine uh, some of the, the the frustrations both from me and her sometimes boil over between us even um, and to hear her crying down the end of the phone and you know uh, the continuous what did I do to deserve this am I a criminal did I do this did I do what it's, it, you can only imagine what, what way we, we must feel hmm. how often do you speak on the phone every day Every day. There hasn't been a day since we were even introduced that we have not spoken. Must be quite a phone bill. Um, the way, um, obviously I have a landline, so I buy these call cards, which cost anything from uh, 5 to 7.50 per card. And um, I have, I suppose, I have over two grand's worth mm. of cards, and I've kept every one. Mind you, money, money really doesn't matter. I mean, you want yeah, to be able like, to talk to your wife, own, and you want to talk to her in to person. Keep the lines of communication up and keep each other's spirits up. You know, there's days that I don't feel great, and there's days that she doesn't feel feel great either. And we were able to kind of be each other's rock. That, that's the way we. I, I keep saying that to her. You, I will be your rock. You will be mine. You know, um, we're not giving up. 
there has to be a way. We're both God-fearing people, and we're both uh, born again Christians. Uh, we attend a church together here in this country. Um, I love the musical aspect of worship. I attend Port Leash um, Family Worship Centre, and I get a lot from it. You know, it has a lot of meaning to me, and I believe that God will help us eventually. Uh, Irish immigration seem to um, be suspicious, or I think the, what it what it is is um, they see her as somebody who evaded um, deportation for so long. Then she frustrated the Irish government, basically giving two fingers up to them, and they're saying, "Well, okay, it's payback time." All right. I, I wish you the best, Joseph. I'm not sure what options are, are left available to you now. Um, mind yourself, especially if the health is precarious. Thanks for taking our call. Thank you very much. Will. Thanks indeed.